Well, welcome to another edition of Table Talk and today Fumi and I have uh, got two guests, uh, Tony and we've also got what's her name uh, Trouble. Trouble, yes, I guess we're going to call her. Uh, now we've got Lynn here who's joining us this evening and what we're going to be talking about specifically is mission work and, and various parts of what that involves throughout the world. So let me begin by talking, when I, when I hear the word mission, uh, it, it sometimes scares me a little bit because I think that the world is a big place and how on earth am I supposed to go out and fulfil the Greek commission if you wish to get out there and all that place. But every now and again I've got to roll myself back in a little bit and thinking well that would be impossible for, for me to go everywhere. Uh, and, and, and fulfill that, that mission, but you guys, have, uh, I'm going to call you specialities in, in, in that area. But what comes to your mind when you think about missions? I kind of think of the old days when people would just spend their time going from one place to another and they're, um, you know, telling about God and sharing that with people and, and helping people wherever, wherever they're going. And it's like a full time thing. And not everybody can do that. So today it's kind of like you see all sorts of people going around from different religious groups, um, you know, trying to spread the good news of trying to tell people about God yeah. and about Jesus. And it's, it's, I think it's hard work. And I, and I think sometimes I wonder what's the best way of doing it and how receptive are people and how hard it must be for people who are constantly on the go and the difficulties of the world today. Um, you know, and effects. So sometimes mission work, I think. <gasps> well, sometimes we, 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 when we talk about mission work, we always we automatically think abroad, but actually yeah. it could be right on your doorstep, couldn't it? Mm -hmm. So let me uh, bring Tony in here because talking about abroad, you, you do a lot of you've done a lot of mission work in, in India. Yes. Yes. So you like to elaborate yes. a little bit on. Yes. Of course, uh, India, like a lot of countries, of course, suffers uh, a lot of poverty mm -hmm. and poor people. And um, the church, of course, sees that need of helping those that are poor and in need, and especially with the children. And that's mainly what I have worked with, the children mm -hmm. in India. Uh, and of course, um, a lot of the children, especially girls, uh, are suffering more because they, in many cases, um, they are um, sort of can go into sometimes prostitution, uh, sometimes they are abandoned by their parents, which seems hard for us to accept that, but obviously because of the financial uh, problems of the families, they're not often able to provide for the children. So the church uh, is certainly actively involved in socially helping uh, people, and especially children, and um, the Christians in India, of course, try to provide the needs to help these children, and in my case, we decided to uh, open up a children's home, especially for girls because they were the most vulnerable ones. Mm -hmm. And of course we um, provided uh, uh, residential care for those children where they would st uh, stay and sleep and they would be fed and they would be looked after and also they would be educated. And of course that is helpful because Education is the key to getting people out of poverty, mm -hmm. and especially the young ones, because if they can get work and they can do a job, they can then provide for, for themselves, and when they grow up and get married, they can provide for their families. So that was the whole idea about the children's home, which was started in uh, 1972. Wow. So, Last year it was our 50th anniversary of the children's home and we've worked out that we've, we've helped um, over 2,000 children in that time and a lot of those children, uh, when they've grown up, 
because of the education they received and the care of looking after them uh, with the Christians there, they have been educated to a standard that they've been able to get jobs. Mm -hmm. And some of the jobs that the children have had are nurses, pharmacists, teachers, working in factories because they're able to sew and clothing and make clothing and make jewellery. So the whole program has, has been a great help for them mm -hmm. because it's given them a great life in the very beginning to, to f help fend for themselves. So I, 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 from what, being a, a, a missionary, if you want to use that term, mm -hmm. the first time you went there, yes, culture shock? Yes. Yeah. I think anybody who goes for the first time will have a culture shock because the first thing that certainly hits you when you get off that plane, is the the the, uh, the poverty which many people live in. Mm -hmm. I can remember when I first landed in, as it was then called Bombay, but it's now called Mumbai. Is that when you came out the airport, right in front of you, it was the shanty town, where where people live, and the, it's not just the sight; it's the smell as well. Mm -hmm. You can smell it. Yeah. You know that the you know the the uh, you know the the, the, the pollution, the decay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, there's, you know, the uh, um, you know the, the, the sort of the smell of uh, the, the, the toilets <laughs> that are outside, and so it certainly hits you, and, and and you feel like, well, I think I'm going back on the first plane yeah. that comes because it's a problem, and of course the the culture of India, of course, is completely different to the West. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and because you, you, you feel sometimes a bit overwhelmed and of course you're sometimes thinking about you know what's the food like, where am I going to stay and of course when I first went to India which was in 1988 um, it, it was a little bit raw and especially when you go the, the cities are sort of very vibrant, very noisy mm -hmm. and very crowded and very hot, uh, it can be overpowering. Once you go out to the rural villages, things probably are better because it's more open, it's of course more fresher, and it's a more slower way of life, of course. So it tends to be slightly better if you're in the rural, pla in rural places rather than in the cities. But things have improved. If you go now, that there's been a l obviously a lot of advancements of um, transportation, of accommodation, uh, places to eat. So it, it's a lot better now, actually 40 years on. And uh, it's probably a little bit more westernised, if you're thinking of going. Uh, but you still see the poverty round about you. I think sometimes you can't understand how that people can ignore the poverty. Mm. You know, you're walking down the street and you see a little a three-year-old with no clothes on, uh, you know, sat in the gutter trying to pick up uh, anything that there's possibly they could eat out of the gutter. And you think, you know, how can people ignore this? Well, of course, the problem is with India, of course, it's often the culture and the caste system that causes the problems. Because a lot of Indian people because of the different castes that they're in, they tend to feel that that person in the gutter is a low caste and there must have been somebody terrible in their previous life. And mm -hmm. so they just accept it, they just accept it. Mm -hmm. and it's always strange that sometimes when I've been going around, you'll see a, a, a shack a, on one side of the street and opposite there's like a mansion. <laughs> mm -hmm. You've got rich and poor facing one another and yet the rich people just get on with their daily lives without complete sort of ignorance of, of those in the, the poor state. So how, how's the, the reception in terms of hearing the gospel, accepting the gospel, is that a challenge for people? Because I, I said to you, I was sitting a few not long ago, that in certain countries, give us this day our daily bread has a totally different meaning. Now, it does. <coughs> From the UK, 
because they're literally looking for the yes, the yes, bread. yes, yes, yes. Um, I think because the, the 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 Christians there are intertwined with helping with the um, physical needs, mm -hmm. they often, of course, they go to people and of course they offer them food or a meal and that gives them a contact through that and um, of course um, uh, introducing maybe Christian principles to them mm -hmm. is, is, is probably the, one of the first goals that if you if it's, often some people used to say that it, it's all to the good that you preach the gospel to people but if they're starving they often think well you know if, if, if God is a God of love and Christianity is a caring society then show us an action by it yeah. and of course the action is to feed them, yeah, to exactly. help them. I mean and, I, and I, I see that in really any country that is, I don't want to call it, because we call it third world, because that's any third world countries, either western civilization or countries that are not, not up to you know, the way the UK, the US, Europe, yes, and so on are. Um, and you see that in those situations where people are poor or life is harder, then they are dependent on, they have a belief system, a belief in a creator, a belief in God, a belief in somebody who will hopefully, who is hopefully out there looking after them. Uh, and when you compare that to a self-sufficient society like the West is, then people are, I, you know, I look after myself, I, as long as I've, I've got a job, I've got this, I've got that, or I'm dependent on the government, then I'm fine. I don't need God. I don't, you know, majority are like, no thank you to the good news, no thank you to, you know, God can help you, or no thank you to, you can have a better life and hope in, in Christ. While well, it's easier to start a conversation with somebody who is in Africa about yeah. religion, somebody who is in India, in Asia, yeah. about or some parts of Asia, about about <coughs> religion. And I'm just wondering what that's like, not only in India, but in, in the US as I mean the US is probably getting to be or probably ahead of the UK, you know. Uh, yeah. I think and it's they, a, I think it's a good time to bring uh, Lily because you you've been on mission trips to the UK on several, several occasions now. Mm -hmm. uh, from from a, an American perspective, what, what's your take on, well, what's your experience been like, and then bringing them with what Fumi's saying, the reaction to, to talking about Jesus and things? It, well, I, I, I view this as one of the most difficult mission fields, just because people are so resistant to the good news about Jesus. Is that in the U.S. or...? Uh, same. It's, it's the same. Okay. Um, <clears throat> speaking for myself, having grown up in the South, which is also called the Bible Belt, we've heard about religion. You know, most people call it religion. We've mm -hmm. heard that all our lives. Mm -hmm. And um, so there's a lot of resistance and people my favorite phrase is called silos, and it's, it's a very apt description of how people tend to close themselves in by their walls of how they view the world. Now, this is the way the world is, I'm comfortable here, I'm here in my little silo, I don't even want to attempt to understand your world or your little silo. I'm, I'm comfortable here in my silo. So over the years I've noticed people in the states are getting more and more resistant to what is the gospel. Mm -hmm. you, you've got all these different views. And what, what were you in the UK? What's been your you know, I don't know how many times you've been over here, no, but quite, a, quite a number of times. Quite a number of times, I've kind of lost count I, I know, myself. When you first came over I had hair, I, I remember that much, I remember mm -hmm. that far back. And you had but, small uh, children. Yeah, very small children. <laughs> so the, the, in terms of, I mean, the, 
And she had an immaculate townhouse. Yeah. Because she yeah. was the first person I stayed with. Yeah. And it was like, oh, I'm going to get killed because I got dirt on the carpet. <laughs> <laughs> so, so the people in the street, you know, normal mother the people in the street, is, is uh, like you said, they're very resistant. They're very resistant. They're scared. And we encounter that in the States, too. If you just try and stop, strike up a, a casual conversation, people are like, oh, no. Yeah. Because there's an interesting Bible passage where it says, God, uh, don't give me too much or I'll become rich mm -hmm. and I'll forget you. Mm -hmm. uh, and God, don't give me too little or I'll become poor and curse you. I think that's the right way I might have it that way around you. So we're almost seen from India and in the UK and the US, you're almost seen that contrast and in, in, in to a degree, aren't you? Mm. You, you see the, the poverty side of it where, where people are, are more uh, prone, if you wish, not to curse God, but to mm. almost be open for hope. Whereas Any kind of hope. here... We don't need it. You, there, there, I've like, got, I've I got everything. We don't need anything, yeah, mm -hmm. so I don't need yeah. that daily bread that we're talking about. Yeah. But you know, they know there's a hole. Yeah. And the wealth of the world is not really doing anything. Yet, yeah, why are people so anxious? Why is mental health so important? You why? don't have God. Why a lot of people commit, commit suicide? You don't have God. You don't have hope. So, hope is a big thing in, in India. Yes, I think um, just just something that I, I can remember is that when the COVID hit the world three years ago, um, a group of Christians went to Sri Lanka, which is southern India, and they went to help people and uh, and, and give them. Um, medical assistance and food etc and often the comment was made by those to whom they met is that they were a little bit puzzled of why people were doing this mm -hmm. why the christians were doing this and of course they were so impressed by what christianity was doing that it made them very uh, sort of questioning you know why are you doing this and of course they told them because this is this is what we do we you know we, we love Jesus we this is what Jesus wants us to do and uh, this is why we do it and of course often that will obviously lead to more conversation well who's Jesus and of course then they would uh, tell them a little bit and, and so it was the action it was the faith in action mm -hmm. that that uh, helped in many cases and of course because basically most of them have nothing to lose because they haven't got anything the, the seeking of a spiritual uh, sort of uh, help uh, was something which many of them uh, uh, sought to seek to find out about Jesus about yeah. the gospel and so this helped and a lot of them were very interested in, in what the Bible had to say, contrary to what the UK and the USA. We've there, heard it all yeah, before. People were eager to find out what is this. Whereas yeah. in the States, they're blasé. Yes. They've yes, heard yes. it all before. Yeah. yeah. You're, you yeah. have nothing for me. That's right. I yeah. know the answer. Yeah. yeah, they don't need Jesus, they mm -hmm. feel, don't they? I've got everything, so mm -hmm. I don't need anything else. It's the opposite, of course, yeah. in India. Because a lot of them haven't yeah. heard of it. That's it, yeah. yeah. And you hear of yeah. people walking miles yes. just to go to yes. worship or yes. to go and study the Bible That's or right. walking miles. Yes. And here people yeah. complain if they have to drive yeah. 10, <laughs> ten yeah. minutes yeah. drive or something yeah. like that. Yeah. And, oh, yeah. That's too far. Because yeah. um, some of the meetings I attended, um, they sort of... Um, gospel meetings or uh, Bible study meetings is that, is that people would walk four to five hours to get to the meeting place wow. and some of them traveled 12 hours to get to, to the meeting and of course when you when they came to the meeting 
you know, you had to speak for at least two to three hours <laughs> to, to, make, to make sure they got their money oh. right. And, and that's, I hear that's the way it is in the South Pacific. Yes, yes. They that's have to true. travel so far, you got to make it worth their while. Yeah, so that's right, yeah. it turns into an all day. All day thing, yes, mm -hmm. yes, yeah. Yeah, because they do provide a meal and everything. It's like a big fellowship gathering. Whereas fellowship meeting, in the yeah. States, yeah. they're looking at their yeah, watch and right. going, okay, yeah, we're coming up on the 30 minute. That's Come it. on. <laughs> Yes, we yeah. gotta beat the Baptists yeah, to the yes, restaurant. Yes, yeah, yeah. Well, we've got to go to the football match. Yeah. So how, how how do we in in the West, in the UK, you know, um, USA, and any other country, Europe, or any other country that's in that same ballpark area where it's difficult to now do mission work, where people are comfortable, they've got their cars, they've got their bus, you know, everything is easier. How do we? move on with mission work in, in this field um, because it, it is a hard slog. You have to keep going, I guess, and, and not give up or mm -hmm. I don't know how, how we go about. I think it's interesting what you were saying when we when, when came to Birmingham, for example, we were in five schools, we were in residential homes, huge youth group and things. Right, that was only, we, were. we were everywhere, and, mm -hmm. and everybody knew us and knew of us and knew of our stuff that we were up to and things like that. But we that, were, was, that was what, seven years ago now, eight years ago now? And the, the thing we were amazed by was how well you were received in the public schools. Yeah. And something like that is not well received in our public schools. Well, but then I can go in and, and take the same school assembly, mm -hmm. uh, like I said, in, in different schools and, and you talk a, a Bible lesson and make it a topical for the kids and sing some action songs, they loved it. But that, that was only six, seven years ago. That's changed now. I mean, we're in a different location and they won't, we can't get in any schools, they won't last near any school and even some of the residential homes, you know. And we could go to residential we can't, homes. We can't go there. Well, we've got one, we've got one residential home that would go and do some singing and things like mm -hmm. that. But in terms of going in and talking to people about Jesus, whether it's kids or, or it's, it's really, really, yeah. things are clamping down. And, and like Fumi says, I think that, uh, Tony, you I always joke about your age, okay? Always joke. That's usually. But he, he was around when the Flintstones were around. <laughs> not, quite, not quite that far. But you, you better have noticed a huge difference yes. in, in terms of mission work, outreach over the years. So it's getting harder and harder and harder. And it's almost like the door is getting slammed shut. Yeah. I think it's it's more anti-biblical mm -hmm. these days mm. because we can well, I, I can remember a thousand years ago but <laughs> but I can remember that when we were in school you had morning assembly mm -hmm. prayer and you'd have a, a sort of a scripture reading and things like that that doesn't happen now mm. I had a Bible teacher when I was in elementary school we had I don't remember now how often we met, but we had Bible study in elementary school. Mm. And of course now they're, they're teaching a lot more, especially in the UK, I know of, they're teaching a lot more of other religions mm -hmm. and a lot yeah. less of, actually they don't teach biblical Christian, Bible based stuff, mm. they will teach general Christians, yes. and it, could, it could be anything. Christmas or Easter or Christmas, Christmas, yeah, Christmas, Christmas yeah. Easter, that kind of yeah. thing, not yeah. necessarily what is based on what is truth in the Bible and so our children are growing up not knowing about the one true God not knowing about the one living God they, they, they're growing up being taught about many gods being taught about many faiths mm -hmm. yeah. and, and but they're know, being sheltered from the Jewish Christian fairy tales yeah and, and they're thinking that you know, Christianity is just a story, it's just mm -hmm. a fairy tale, it's, fairy it's not tales. history. It's fairy you know, tales. Yeah. Which yeah. is something think, we have to combat. Yeah. Well, I think really. also, of course, that's exactly what happens because when you talk about, say, uh, Noah or Job or Abraham, uh, the, the world looks upon them as stories. Correct. <clears throat> and, you know, they're, they're fairy tales, mm -hmm. they're not real. Well, you know, this, I've seen yeah. the Ten Commandments, what, yeah. hundreds of times? Yeah. Moses, yeah. Charlton Heston is <laughs> Moses. <laughs> yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah. And, uh, of course, we, 
I mean, I also think, of course, that it, it, it's because the modern day society today, as I said, is more is, is anti-biblical, because uh, in nearly all cases, of course, there is the the, the sort of the, the pushing of the evolutionary idea. Well, and uh, um, climate change, preserving yes, the earth, yes, yes, it, it's gone to yeah. nature worship. Yes, yes, yes. We've yes. gone back to paganism. That's right. Yeah. Mother, Mother Gaia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And of course, that that is is the the sub, the fact the beginning foundation of of, of everything. The beginning. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And of course, because in schools they teach them the evolution uh, theory. Uh, children don't know any alternative. Yeah. They, they think that that's all that's true, what they're being told. And there is not a sort of um, an equal balance of showing the other side of the coin, yeah, which but, is creation. But course. creation yeah. isn't true, yeah, that's right, yeah. according yeah, to yeah, the, yeah. the people who come that's up right. with the yes, curriculum. Yes. Yes. That's something so, we contend yeah. with in the States. Yes. It yes. seems to me, going back to what Fu is saying in terms of how we move forward, I think it comes full cycle to what I said at the start, that the mission field starts in your neighbourhood. Mm -hmm. It starts with your next door neighbour, mm -hmm. with your friends, your families, those who are in need, and, 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 and try to help. You know, we... we, we that's, there's that's lots started. of opportunity around, yes. right in front of us. That started in our neighbourhood. Yeah. During COVID, my husband would go walking with a neighbor of ours, and they'd talk about Jesus, because our neighbor was interested. Yeah. You know, if people are interested, they'll come find well, you. Well, people are very suspicious at the same time, you know, we mm -hmm. just had their friends and families day, and I got one comment on Facebook saying, oh, there's no such thing as a free lunch. And I was, I was sitting there and what a shame this guy has never had a free lunch in his life, you know, nobody's ever paid for his dinner. Uh, but people are very suspicious, especially when you put religion in the frame. And then uh, there's always that concept that the, the church is always trying to get money from me. Yeah, well, there's, there's some Christians who do that, unfortunately, mm -hmm. and give that bad tag. But I, I think, you know, mission for me uh, over the years has come to mean different things. And I think it starts in my home, with my wife, with our kids, and then it filters outwards to wherever we get an opportunity. It's, it starts in the because community. Because I, I think you, you nailed it. The, everybody's got a need of some sort. Mm -hmm. And it's seeing that need and just going to help and, and, and helping that need without any strings attached. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that very often... And you have to make forward. them understand there's no strings. But that, yeah. There is yeah. no strings here. I'm yeah. not. I'm not out for your money. Yeah. You know, we're dealing with that because our our neighbor's wife is very suspicious, and she's convinced that the church is out for their money, and we're like, we're not. <laughs> yeah. I think so, also also we have to. Everybody has a need of some sort, whatever it may be, and it's unless we build a relationship mm -hmm. with people and get to know what that need is, then we can help. We want to know what that need is so we can help. And when we help, and because we have a relationship with them, we can tell them why we do things as we do in India. And we can tell them what's important to us and why God is important to us. And especially in today's state with COVID, where post-COVID, a lot of people, met as I said, mental issues now becoming, health issues now becoming a big thing now. And I'm thinking, people, have, people don't realize you've got a lot more problem with spiritual health issue because your mental health issue stems from that. And if, not, not labeling everything as that's mental health, spiritual issue, but helping people to come to realize I'm able to overcome what I have been through because God has done for me and he can do the same to you. And it's finding a way of trying to say that to people it's, it's, I remember one guy saying to me, you, you could put a thousand leaflets through a door saying double glazing windows, double glazing windows, you get no response. But you keep doing the same town for five years and then some don't respond. Why? Because now they need to double glaze windows. 
that was good words and it, it, it said that to me a long, long time ago. I'll never forget that. Mm -hmm. And I think that's been, for us, it's about being in the right place at the right mm -hmm. time. There has to and be having a the need. right words and, and when people get to that need. And it's mm -hmm. a shame, and it, but it's a trend. A lot of people seem to need faith or Jesus when they're at their rock bottom, which brings us right back to, like you said, in India, when things are absolutely desperate you know, the Christian steps in and, and offers them hope and it's not a it's not a bribery hope, it's not a it's a real hope. And not just for this life but for the for the life to come. But you do have to be at your rock bottom. For a lot of people. Mm -hmm. I know I, I had to be. For our neighbor Ray, he was pretty rock bottom because yeah. he he's got a lot of health issues. I think also the greatest key about, with all of this, with mission work, is God. Mm -hmm. It's God's mission, and we're just helpers in His mission work. And, and the gospel it. is powerful. Yeah, mm -hmm. It is. And, and I think pray is very, very important in when we're going out, or when we're talking to people, or when we're seeking people who could help or reach out to. And just you know, be aware God. of opportunities. Yeah. For, for always, help, always be on the lookout. That's what Paul says, isn't it? Pray mm -hmm. that God will open up doors for me. He also says, pray that my conversation will be seasoned with salt. You know, Jesus taught about prayer for the for the the field before he even go out and sow anything. Uh, so that there is a an order, if you wish, uh, going about doing it. I just think in, in some places it's just going to be more difficult than others mm -hmm. yeah. because really it's down to the heart of mm -hmm. the people. And if, people are hard. Don't, if people don't need see a need to be saved, the way you think about it. Remember Jesus? He would leave the towns that had no faith in him. Yeah. So yep. you, you really you really can't have Jesus unless you have faith. I guess on the bottom line is we're supposed to just sow the seed. Mm-hmm. It will fall anywhere. We don't need to try and dig into the type of soil to see is this fertile soil or not. We need to just sow it and let God work, yeah. and it's His work, work. And He will bring those people to you that mm -hmm. are looking. Yeah. I think also we have to remember that uh, when Jesus was here on earth, His main priority was those in need, mm -hmm. the poor, those that needed, you know, help. And that is, I think, one of the ma the main things that. Uh, the Christians have to do. It, it, it's 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 something which, of course, they follow what Jesus did by helping the poor. Well, what what question yeah. did he always ask? Them? <coughs> do you believe I can do this? Yes. Do you yeah. have faith? Yeah. And, yeah. And, and you got to believe. Yeah. I think just to sum what you've just said, that I mean, James tells us, doesn't it? True yes, yes. religion that's acceptable acceptable to God is to look after the widows and orphans mm -hmm. in the distress. Now that's just not exclusively talking about widows and orphans. No. He's talking about anybody the, who's vulnerable. Who are vulnerable. Uh, and and yeah. every country, mm -hmm. regardless of how well they are, have got those people. The small children, the elderly, yeah. Yeah. the people okay. with bad yeah. health. Yeah. Well, thank you both for uh, coming along and joining us. Um, we, we are sure that this is a, a, a blessing for people when they, when they get to watch this. And uh, thank you all for joining us again and uh, we hope and pray we'll see you soon. God bless. Mm -hmm.